Hello everybody and welcome to Best of British Blackwell. This week's video is quite special. I'm going to be cooking a whole suckling pig on my uh, Weber barbecue. What I will say from the very outset of this video is that it's quite graphic. A suckling pig is literally a baby pig and I'm cooking the whole thing. So if you are a little bit squeamish or if you don't like seeing you know, the whole animal on a spit, um, uh, this video might not be for you. But if you are into your meat, suckling pig is probably one of the, the nicest meats you can get hold of. So come over, have a look, let's make a start. So we're gonna look to start preparing this pig to go onto the spit. Um, this is the day before I'm um, attempting to cook this. Um, I'm going to be applying a rub to this and I'm going to be marinating it in that rub so I want the rub to take effect uh, for as long as possible. The way we're going to prepare this is simple really, we're going to give it a bit of a pat down and just make sure it's as dry as possible. Um, and then we've got these uh, trotters here which are tiny, not a great deal of meat on them. So what we're going to do um, is chop these off because what you'll find is that these will start to hit against the side of the barbecue or the grill or whatever you're going to cook this on. And it's as simple as getting a nice sharp knife, finding the joint, cutting down as far as the bone. So, getting down as far as the joint. Take you. There you go. You give it a little bit of a crack, and that's off. Um, you know, I did warn at the start of the video that this would be quite quite a graphic video, probably one of my most graphics um, videos. So I can't apologize for how savage this kind of is. But what we want to do is make sure that this cooks as easy as possible. Now these, you could boil these up and make a, make a stew out of them. But, um, I'm not going to bother in this instance, there's not a great deal of meat in there, so they can go straight into the bin. What we have to look for now, now we've got the kind of trotters off, is to see what the butcher has left inside here. What the butcher will usually do is leave the kidneys, and yep, in this instance, the kidneys are in there. Okay, so now we're approaching, getting ready to um, apply the rub um, to this. And the way I'm going to do that is by laying out a nice sheet of foil. So we'll move this guy to one side. Nice big sheet of foil there. Transfer pig over. We'll move our board out of the way at this stage. And then this gives us a nice clean area to work on when the rubs, when you're rubbing the rubs into the, to the body, into the inside, you don't want to lose most of the rub, you want to make sure it stays in and then later on what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this pig up in the foil. So, okay, so before we go on with the rub, um, I'll focus in a little bit. What you'll probably see from um, this animal is that, yeah, it's quite damp, it's quite wet. So you want to pat as much of the moisture off there as you can. Um, you'll notice at this stage I'm not scoring this meat um, and I'll explain why in just a moment but pass it down, get it as dry as you can. We are going to put moisture on here but it's not going to come in the form of, of water or condensation because this pig is quite cold. It's going to come in the form of some oil that we're going to use. So we're going to get some olive oil now. Give it a good coat this side. Get your hands in there. Work it into this flesh. Work it into this flesh. Beautiful. And now I'm just going to go over and wash my hands. Okay. And now with nice clean hands, we're going to go on with our first rub. Um, and this is simply salt and pepper. So it's four pepper, so four different peppercorns. I think there's green, black, red, 
some pink peppercorns in this. So we're gonna salt this and pepper it liberally. And this is why I'm not scoring the skin to start off with. If anyone's watched any of my pork videos before when I make crackling, you'll see that the effect that salt has on pig skin is that it brings moisture out. Now, if I score this pig now, that moisture will come out inside this tin foil. And when I open it up, it will just be kind of a bit of a wet mess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this marinate as whole, if you like. So I'm gonna let it marinate just like this. Uh, you will get some moisture out of this skin, but it won't be as bad as if you started scoring it. We will uh, score this pig, but we're not gonna do it just yet. We're gonna do it just before it goes on the spit. So that's the salt and pepper. In between all of these layers of seasoning, I'm washing my hands. This is pork, you can't be too careful. The next uh, bit of seasoning I'm gonna use is Old Bay seasoning. Now it says that this is for seafood and chicken, but this works really well with pork. Um, I really like it. And again, all we're gonna do is give this pig a really good dusting. All over the place. Now our final piece of seasoning comes in the form of pulled pork seasoning which I've just picked up in my local supermarket. Nice and cheap, beautiful smells and it's exactly the type of flavour that we want to we want to get on this meat and although I'm going to put a light dusting all over the top of this, this uh, pig where I'm going to focus the energy for this uh, rub is inside. So it's going to get a light dusting over the top and as you see as I can continually turn in the pig I'm getting quite a lot of this seasoning kind of rubbing in. Um, you know, you, you, it's kind of soaking itself all over the place. So what I'm gonna do here is with my sharp knife, I'm gonna open this cavity up just a little bit more so I can get in here. This is the chest cavity. And uh, hopefully, what I'll do is I'll turn this around now. And hopefully what you can see is this opens up the rib cage here. And you've got a beautiful, um, baby back ribs in there. So what we're going to do now is I'm, I'm going to start getting a lot of this in here. Don't worry about too much. Get your hand in there. Start moving it around. Start making sure that all of this meat gets a beautiful liberal amount of that seasoning in there. Bring in another end up here. And folding these over on themselves. Sorry, I hope you can hear me over the sound of the foil. I'm gonna fold it over on itself so it creates a kind of seamless joint here. And then what that enables you to do is create one huge blanket of foil. And then all you need to do, starting at the back, roll this baby over. and you're wrapping it up just like a sweetie. Crunch it at the ends. Crunch it at the ends. That is ready to go back into the fridge and we're ready to put that on the spit. And so to go with our roast or barbecue suckling pig, what better than a bit of beautiful homemade applesauce? And it's so, so simple to make. I'm making mine with a very slight twist. I'm gonna be putting some barbecue uh, relish with uh, Chipotle chili in it. Let's just give it a little bit of a kick, not too much, but overall it's gonna be nice sweet apples, kick of sweetness, little bit of chili at the end. So, um, start things off, let's get these apples peeled and I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so our apples are peeled now. As you can see, what I've done is I've peeled them and I've chopped them down into about two centimeters cubed. You can go smaller if you want, it will, um, won't take as long to cook if they're a bit smaller, um, or you can go bigger, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna uh, puree these down anyway. Now I've got some Demerara sugar. Gonna put quite a bit of that in there. I would say that that's probably a good half a cup full. And then we've got about 200 mils of water. Basically, what we're gonna do is put this on the heat, bring it to a simmer, and then have another little look. Okay, so the apple sauce is now off the heat. It's simmered for about 10 to 15 minutes and look, can you see what's happening? The apples are starting to soften and break, it, break down 
into that consistency that you would normally associate with applesauce. So the rest of this cooking now is all off of the heat. We're going to let this start to cool and what will happen is that the sugar in there will start to crystallize, it will start to sweeten up. You're releasing the sweet and sour flavors from the apples as well. But before we do that, two nice spoonfuls of this barbecue chipotle relish. Just stir that in and that's just going to add a nice contrast to the sweetness of the apple that we've got in there. Now, because this has cooked down so well, some would say that I've overcooked this, um, but you know, I'm not too fussed. I, uh, and you know, uh, you don't need to get the stick blender in there. All you need to do really is, as you can see with the side of this spoon, I'm starting to chop this apple sauce up into the consistency that I'm looking for. And I'm going to leave it at that actually. I do want some bits of chunky apple in there. So there we go. Apple sauce takes about 20 minutes and you know, most of that is chopping the apples up. But this is going to be a beautiful accompaniment to our beautiful sucked in pig. Okay, so we're now on the day of the cook. The pig has been resting for 24 hours in this beautiful rub and marinade that we put it in. What we're going to do here, first of all, I'm going to remove this pork because I don't think it's going to help me with this. So let me put this over here. What we're going to do now is put this pig on the spit. I will warn you, this is quite graphic, so you know if you're a little bit squeamish, and you won't really want to watch this. Um, but seeing as we're going to be uh, barbecuing this pig on the on the spit, it has to be done. Wow, beautiful! Wow, smells coming out of here are absolutely lovely, absolutely fantastic. Um, there's no real. Um, classy way of doing this. This spit is basically going to go through the mouth of the pig, it's going to go through the chest cavity and then it's basically going to pop out here through the backside. Um, like I said, no other way of doing this really, so I'm going to have a go now uh, on camera. So there's already a cavity there, there's a cavity there and then just before we get to the point where it goes through the, the backside of this pig, we're going to put our spikes in. I'm going to use at least one of these. Might end up using two. Um, I'm not sure actually. I think one spike might actually be enough. Um, but we'll put the second one in anyway. So let's put the spikes on. I don't think we can be too uh, over cautious with this. And then we have to dip the spit to come through the back of the pig like that and then that is going to keep this pig securely on here um, okay so it took a little bit of adjusting but the pig is now on the spit and we are ready to take it outside and see that it fits on our rotisserie uh, properly so excuse the smoke but obviously starting up the barbecue so there's going to be a little bit of smoke around what we're going to do now is just check that our pig fits on the spit properly As we can see, it's quite tight and it's not quite in. So what I'm going to do is, while it's on the grill here, I'm going to squeeze things up just a little bit. So this, these legs need to come in a little bit more. And actually, you know, we're not we're not far off of getting this in here. So let me make some adjustments, and then we're going to get the coals on here and start cooking. Okay, so we're very nearly ready now to start cooking our pig. Next step is going to be to put a drip tray in there. You're going to get a lot of juices coming from this. Also, I'm going to be using a meter probe, um, which is a wireless probe, to let me know how this cookie is going. I'm going to put it into the fattest part of the meat here, which is the ham or the ham hock at the back. Um, hopefully the uh, barbecue won't get too hot for the meter probe and that will give me an accurate reading as to uh, what we're measuring temperature wise. And then uh, finally what we're going to do is one more test of the spit. You can probably see that I've used some butcher's twine here just to hold the legs together. I was finding that when I was testing it on the spit here it was moving backwards and forwards. I didn't want that to happen anymore. 
So one final test, let it have another full rotation. There you go, those are those juices I was telling you about. You're going to get quite a few of those coming out. And that is not looking, not looking too bad. That's quite decent rotation there. Yep, I'm quite happy with that. Might make one minor adjustment here. There we go. Now, what we're going to do is get some coals in. Go half and half. That's great. As the heat starts to die down in here, what we'll do is we'll start to add coals into this just to keep our temperature set. But there we go. We'll set the spit. Put our lid on, and then let's see how things progress. Okay, so we've had this. Uh, pig on the spit now for about 45 minutes and will you just take a look at that it's starting to cook beautifully you can see the color in it is absolutely wonderful it's going to go a lovely golden color uh, our coals are still really really hot drip trays exactly where I want it to be uh, you will notice so over here in the corner I had neglected to add this little kind of grommet here which helps the spit turn much nicer but look look at that beautiful golden color on this pig it's coming on an absolute treat we're going to put the lid back on we're going to keep this heat up we're going to keep a close eye on it and then we're fast approaching the time where we're going to <laughs> we're fast approaching the time where we're going to get a little bit of spritz and start spraying it with some apple juice just to keep it moist so come okay so about another 30 minutes in and as you can see this cookie's going beautifully look at this skin hopefully you can hear that starting to dry out which is what we want we don't want it to dry out too much because the meat inside isn't quite done yet so we're going to spray the skin the cavity some beautiful apple juice and all that is is plain apple juice and that just keeps this nice and moist okay so this has been on now for about two hours as you can see it's all very nicely done but what we're trying to do here now is crisp this skin up so some parts of this skin are quite crispy but other parts are quite soft and that's no good for crackling so what we're going to do is give it a spray of oil all over just like you would with um like a pork belly joint and then what we're going to do is remove the drip tray in the middle and bring the coals directly underneath so it's on direct heat that's going to crisp this up We'll come back in a minute. Awesome, right. Okie dokie, so we're done now. We're taking this off. It's been on for about three hours. As you can see, got a beautiful bit of skin. We're going to let this rest now. We're going to let this crackling go nice and, uh, nice and hard. Here we go. Okay, so you might have heard that on the day that I was actually making this video, I had quite a lot of friends and family around. Obviously, when you cook something like a suckling pig, it's a little bit of an event. So um, I wasn't actually able to spend much time uh, dedicating things and time to uh, camera. Um, so what I'm showing you here is how I carved this pig up and kind of what it looked like. Um, first thing I will say is that I let it rest too long. Um, the, the crackling on the skin, which uh, was beautiful by the time I took it off of the, um, off of the barbecue, had started to kind of soften. A little bit but actually the meat had cooked really really nicely um, this is a very sharp knife that I'm using here but it's not really taking much effort to take this meat off so what I do here is I cut it down into four or five kind of big pieces um, it's such a small um, animal that you know it's, it, it's kind of hard to um, you know break it down too much um, it does take a little bit of work and it was still very hot um, but what I would say is that the meat that came off of this thing was absolutely beautiful it was such a sweet delicate tasting meat um, would I cook one of these again absolutely I do things a little bit differently I would um, not let it rest as much so that the crackling would stay 
um, as, uh, as, as nice as it was when I first took it off the barbecue. Um, but then I would also probably um, cook it a little bit longer so that the crackling was even tougher than it was when I first took it off. Um, but all in all, it was really, really nice. It was really beautiful. Um, I'm sorry that I didn't video uh, us serving this up. Um, and I'm sorry for anybody that's a little bit offended by the fact that I've cooked the suckling pig in the first place. But, you know, it was one of those things where you, you, you don't get to do it very often. So um, I thought I'd take advantage of the fact that I could do it now. Um, so uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, see you again soon.